The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Let's go, baby! Are you ready for a break? Yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. Happy Friday, guys. We are here at the Star Rainy Day here in Frisco, feeling pretty cozy and great. Nick looks very confused right now. What's going on with your mic or uh, headphones? This is, if I hold it just like this, I, I can, <laughs> so hear, you can it. hear it. Stop, stop. You messed it up, it up Derek. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, we have uh, some... It's a brand in- new place, man. I, I don't know what's, what's going on here. We have some interesting things that we're going to be talking about today. One of them being... Uh, Jerry Jones that made a comment earlier this morning. We'll get into that later in the segment. But first, let's start off with where we left off on yesterday's show. Derek, you were going to bring the whole uh, uh, Zeke versus Jalen Ramsey and Miles Jack versus Jalen Smith. What was your question with that? Well, really what I wanted to talk about was um, right now, this week, the Cowboys face a team where there are two players on each team that are inextricably linked to players on the other team because of where they were drafted. Um, I think if you remember back, Jalen Smith and Miles Jack, uh, they were the two linebackers that in that draft most people thought were the two best linebackers in that draft, but for the fact that they were both injured. Um, And then there were questions about how injured, right? There was questions about Miles Jack was more, uh, he he could play, I think yesterday I was talking to Brian, his quote was, he could play 10 games or 10 years. Like, it it was one of those things where he can play now, but I don't know how long he'll play. With Jalen Smith, it was like, I don't know if he'll ever play well again. Both of them are playing now. Both of them are playing pretty well. Um, So I ask you guys the question with regards to Miles Jack and Jalen Smith. Do you think the Cowboys still made the right decision in going with Miles Jack and not going with, I'm sorry, in going with Jalen Smith and not going with Miles Jack? I take issue with it on a small level just because, like, for instance, the, the Zeke Jalen thing, that is an interesting and lively debate because. You mean Zeke, Zeke who? Zeke and Jalen. Jalen, Jalen. Yeah, okay, sorry. I got you. I got you. I thought you were talking about Jalen Smith. No, yeah, Rams. I got you. get that now. Yeah. Um, we know that it was pretty much down to those two. They were going to take one and they yes. chose Zeke. I have never heard anything to suggest that if they hadn't taken Jalen Smith that they were going to take Miles Jack. Uh, He had his own medical. They didn't work with him the way that they did the surgery on Jalen. They did not have that inside information that made the, you know, they were so confident in Jalen because of that. Uh, So I don't think it's as clean of a comparison just because if they hadn't taken Jalen Smith, I don't know for sure what they would have done. So it's a little bit different, but. Do you think that that was a situation where they took Jalen Smith because of the talent, not necessarily because they felt like they needed to get a linebacker? Or um, do you think there was another linebacker that they had ahead ahead of uh, Miles Jack that they may would that, that maybe they would have taken? I, I that's I don't know because Miles Jack was clearly the next best linebacker, and uh, Kevin Dodd and um, there was another oh, and Emmanuel Ogba literally went off right. the board, boom, boom, right in front of him. So like that's and Ogba, they were supposedly very interested. They in. were probably going to draft Ogba if right. he hadn't gone to Cleveland two picks before. But I can't say with certainty that they would have taken Miles Jack in that spot. And I don't know what they would have done. They could have. I mean, there were some corners there. I think there was there were safeties. I'd have to look at it to be sure. But um, so I don't think it's as easy as saying if Jalen Smith isn't on this team, Miles Jack is. Yeah. But they clearly. I mean. Talk to any draft analyst, and Jalen Smith would have been ranked as one of the five best players in that draft if he had if overall, absolutely, yeah. if he hadn't been hurt. Um, so we know they like to take chances in the second round. They're like, well, our doctor gave us reason to feel good about this, and if he can even get close to that talent level, this pick will be worth it. And we killed him for it. A lot of people did. Um, and it it's still early, but it looks like it's paying off. I mean, even it's if like he, they make a good decision, even yeah. if he just plays at this level, you know borderline pro bowl probably still not perfect but still with his leadership and intangibles and everything i mean yeah it looks like it's going to be well worth it in the long run nick um i agree with all that i think dr cooper is the is the key there i mean i think that the the information that they got um yeah and you're right this is not a a clear cut i mean miles jack i i don't even know was on their board i'm not sure about that because he just never his name was never being mentioned he really wasn't being talked about other than brian 
I mean, I, I don't. I, and that's that's my point. Is yeah, I don't know if he's on their board either because, and it's it's different because Jalen's like he's got to do all this recovery. Whereas Miles Jack, to your point, he's like he could play today, but we're not sure about that knee. So J- Jalen, though, I, you know, I think that they they just evaluated him so high that it was like you know we've done this before with other guys. With players that are, you know, fall into this spot, this is what Jerry likes to do, and it's worked pretty well. Worked with Sean Lee, I think you could say. I mean, they tried it with Bruce Carter. That didn't really work so well. I mean, I know there's been some others uh, in the second round that, that you know, wrote. Did Lawrence come in with an injury? Um, no. No. I thought one of the defensive ends came in with I mean, something, I mean, but I can't remember You who. can make the – Randy Gregory Randy. was another well, situation. That was, that, yeah, you know, different. So it falls for different reasons. <laughs> yeah. So they, 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 they're looking for value in the second round. Right. You can't get any better value than that if he can play to that level. Right now he's doing it. So I think that one's pretty good. And the other the other one's interesting too if, yeah. you're, if you're going there. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at Jalen Ramsey and you look at Ezekiel Elliott, and like you said, Dave, they were going to pick the, – the conventional wisdom was they were going to pick one of those two guys. They chose Zeke over Jalen Ramsey. And my, I think the biggest question around that um, really is about the position because when you think about the way the NFL values a cornerback versus running back, it's way harder, it seems like, in today's NFL to find a quality cornerback or great cornerback than it is to find a great running back. And you can tend to find great running backs even later in the draft. So with all that we've seen and all that we've heard to this point and how they've both performed in their, so far in their careers, both of them have been really, really good players. Do you think the Cowboys made the right decision in going with the running back over the cornerback? Yes, 100%. And I wonder if Jacksonville, I don't know if Jacksonville How would have 2016 them. looked like? Wouldn't it look like that? I don't know. But, you know, here's the question. that That's where other people that would argue on the opposite side would say, tell me who the Cowboys would have selected in the third or fourth round then. Because they may have selected a running back that could turn, have turned out to be a really good running back in the third or fourth round. And they've got a shutdown corner over there on the outside. So I, I don't think it's as easy as just saying, well, if you didn't have Zeke, then 2016 wasn't going to be good. Running backs are in this league. Very much, you know, I don't want to say a dime a dozen, but you can find good running backs in a lot of places in this league. That being said, Jalen Ramsey is probably not the player that he is there, too, because he's not getting as much help as up front as he as he got in Jacksonville. He's he would be now, though. He might be now. With the pass rush now, wouldn't you say? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not as good as Jacksonville, but in 2016, <laughs> I don't think so. Statistically, they're Just, better than Jacksonville this year, aren't they? This year. As far as the pass rush? This yeah, year, this year. Yeah. yeah, this year. Hey. They asked the best cornerback in the history of the NFL what he thought of Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, he was... They played the same position. They went to the same school. And he said, Deion Sanders said, that he looks like a safety. Does Not sure if he's got the hips for it. I, w- I was told that by two different people that, that in around the scouting coaching area. They said that Deion kind of thought he was more of a safety. And with the fourth overall pick, they didn't want to draft the safety. But he did say on record he thought the Cowboys should take him because he thought he was going to be a great cornerback. Now, that's I heard him say that. I know I heard him say that. He did an interview on NFL Network where he went out and spent a, some, a day or whatever with Jalen Ramsey. Mm-hmm. And then after that, they came back and they did the debrief there on set. And he said, I think this is going to be a really good safety in the NFL. And then I saw him on another program later where he said he thought the Cowboys should take him. Now, again, you know, he can say a lot of things on the record that are right. different than off the record. But on the record, that's what he was saying. Well, which one said. is it? Did you say he was going to be a safety or is a corner? You just said you – first you said corner, then you said safety. What did Deion No, I'm sorry. It was not safety. I never heard him say safety oh. on the record. No. I never heard him say safety on the record. I'm but sorry. That's, I wrote about that in my column yesterday. Like, that's a forgotten storyline. He might have wound up at corner, but – there, there was conventional wisdom said they might try him at safety. Like, there was no consensus. It seems dumb now because he's all pro. But yeah. there were plenty of teams that thought he would make a better safety than a corner. Who knows what the Cowboys would have done. That's I wrote I – tried, I tried to go as many levels deep as I could with this in my column because it's crazy. You're absolutely right. Like – and, you know, it's, you know, people love to say, like, oh, they could have gotten Jordan Howard in the fifth round. Jordan Howard wasn't on their radar. It probably would have been Derrick Henry or Paul Perkins, if I had to guess. Um, does Romo get hurt in that scenario? Is, or is one of those guys good enough to just completely fuel your offense the way Zeke did? Probably not. Yeah. Your defense is a lot better. Do you draft Dak? You might have to take Paul Perkins in the fourth round. That's about where he wound up. Uh, CJ Proceis is another guy they liked. You could have had him in the second instead of Jalen Smith. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, the whole thing would change. Mm-hmm. Right, Lots that's what I'm saying. Change. There's a lot Domino of difference. Effect. So it's hard to say 
kind of make that 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 adjust. I mean, to make that statement about 2016. And, and I don't know. know if Jacksonville at that point. I know they took Fournette the next year, right? The, yeah. But at that point, I think they weren't they still like. Didn't they have a guy that they kind of liked? They weren't really. They, they had were, Yeldon and. Um, I don't know if they were going to take Zeke right there. No, it like they did have was, somebody. Was it still? Um, was that before D'Angelo Williams? No, no, he was with Carolina. Um, I'm thinking about somebody else that seemed like a, an older running back that was there before yeah. all those guys. As got as you might imagine, Jacksonville's media has been talking about this too, and the, they Chris were Ivory. they were aiming to fix their defense in that draft. Like they were not going to draft Zeke. Yeah. They were it was going to be Jalen. I think they liked Bosa. He went third. Yeah. Um, oh, which took him off the board. That loved, was another guy the Cowboys were linked to. Too. They loved DeForest Buckner as well, who's been good in San Francisco, not on Zeke or Jalen's level. Right. But um, yeah, it's wild to think about. The other thing, well, what I was going to say is, it's a cop out, but you you can't answer if it was the right move right now. You really can't. Um, I think Zeke's going to be an Adrian Peterson type of like you know gener- generational running back. I'm not saying he's going to the Hall of Fame, but he's going to be one of the best backs in the league for the period of time that he's playing. And, you know, and there are some people in Jacksonville right now, I mean, quietly, I don't think they're coming out saying it, but but they are a little bit, you know, down on Fournette and, and disappointed mm-hmm. with, with what he's been able to do and not do. And you look at Zeke, and there's the risk that's taking a running back that high. And, and you know, Cowboys have had some issues off the field with him, but for the most part, as far as production – they, they, you know, when he's there, he's there. Right. And people see that. So I would guess Jalen Ramsey is going to be able to play. I think about Charles Woodson and Adrian Peterson like that. I mean, they don't they don't play similarly, but I just think about their career arcs. Adrian Peterson was the best or one of the best in the league for about nine years. Charles Woodson played for 17. I think it's yeah. way more likely Jalen Ramsey is going to play longer. Zeke's At a higher g- level. Zeke is going to make your offense viable slash good and be a pro bowler for probably eight years. And if you win a championship in that window, then it was the right pick. Like, I mean, if Jalen Ramsey plays a decade longer than Zeke, but Zeke helps the Cowboys win their sixth Super Bowl, is anybody going to just seriously quibble about it? Yeah. No. But if but they the- don't, and, you know, if Zeke retires and, and it never gets better than 2016 and Jalen Ramsey plays until 2025 – then it's a different conversation. And I think the part that can't be lost in all this is the, the whole philosophy. You get my 2035, whatever, yeah, you get yeah. my point. The, the whole philosophy that the Cowboys have taken that they're going to go the route of having a run-first offense, and if that works, then having a guy like Zeke makes a bunch, a bunch of sense. If we find out later that that was a bad decision to go with that philosophy in today's NFL where it's geared so much toward teams being able to pass efficiently, I mean, be able to pass and needing to be able to pass in order to win – then then it becomes a much different conversation because now you're talking about a guy that could have defended against the pass versus a guy that is a runner primary that is a runner and and that changes that whole the whole complexion of that debate regardless of how they perform it changes whether it was a good decision or not but you know it, it actually worked out better than they thought it would because to have Dak start all those games you needed uh, Zeke you know if Romo's going to probably get hurt either way Romo gets hurt and you've got Jalen Ramsey. Now you got some issues big time at the running back and the whole offense. So, I mean, it probably worked out the way it needed to right then. Yeah. All right. Well, this is a potato potato discussion. So <laughs> we'll leave it at that. We'll take our first break. And when we come back, we'll get a conversation that might get a little heated. Maybe a lot Never of people on this show. are going to get pretty heated with what Jerry Jones said in regards to Jason Garrett. If you're like me and you love. <laughs> I mean, if you have a thing, then cutting the cord is scary. But then I found out I could switch to DirecTV now and still get the live sports I love. No satellite needed, no bulky hardware, no annual contract. Just get the live sports you love. Try DirecTV now for $10 a month for three months. Visit DirecTVnow.com. DirecTV now. More for your thing. That's our thing. Use code REALDEAL. Limited time. Price for a little, little package. After three months, we use monthly at full price. Currently minimum $40 unless canceled. Prices may change. New subscribers only. Cancel any time. Content varies by package and may be limited. Restrictions apply. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with sideline access and photo ops with current players, alumni, and cheerleaders. That's not all, though. You'll get to talk X's and O's with Senior Director of Player Personnel Will McClay and, of course, with yours truly me, Brian Broaddus. You can trust the official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and with us, you'll travel like a pro. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. 
Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Playmaker, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The Playmaker includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm and a Cowboys can cooler. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word COWBOYS. The Jack Black Playmaker, 10 bucks, free shipping. While a player can look good on paper, it's when he's out on the field that you really find out what he's made of. That's why the Cowboys rely on more than stats and scouting reports when building their team. When picking a tractor, it's why you should rely on more than specs and features as well. you got to take it out and put it to the test. The Cowboys did when they named John Deere their official tractor. To experience one for yourself, visit your local Texas John Deere. DeerDealer.com slash football. Back to the break. We are back on the second segment of the break. Um, Jerry Jones went on the fan this morning, and he said something that a lot of people are going to like. And uh, can't do we have the audio for it? We don't, but it'll be on DallasCowboys.com today. Okay, so y'all can check that out. But Mm -hmm. Nick tweeted it out earlier. This is what Jerry said. Jason Garrett is absolutely the real deal. There's no fraud in Jason Garrett. Does he have some things he could do better? Of course. But what I think is that we have an asset that will get us to where we want to go, which is a championship. Initial reactions to this comment that Jerry Jones made. He's obviously not ready to you make any sound moves. insane. Okay. Um He's not ready to make a, a change there, so um, he's gonna, you know, have that approach. He's gonna stick by that for sure. And so, you know, it, th- that's what that's what he believes. He believes that he is not a fraud. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what the question was there. Um, but you know, just to say, yeah, I mean, he could do some things better. That, that's fine. Has the assets to win a championship. You know. Fans don't really want to hear it because they they they, don't they ain't see seen it. it. They yeah. don't see anything really close to that. There's one playoff win there. So, um, but I think why I believe it's just important is the last time we really heard him talking about it, he said that he questioned a decision that Jason made, and that's been a big topic of discussion this week: is what should he have punted or not? And you know, and and I I just think that it's it's you know Garrett's making sure that. I mean, Jerry's making sure that he's going to say all the right things when it comes to, to backing his coach when he really didn't do that Sunday night. Here's the fact of the matter. He had two cho- choices here. He could either endorse his, his head coach or anything else. If he no comments, if he says something that's lukewarm, if he says, hey, he's got a lot of problems, any of that other stuff, now he's created a whole firestorm. It's an even bigger story. Exactly. He's created a whole firestorm, not just with the media, but now even in the locker room. Because in the locker room, players are now saying, hmm, the owner's questioning, or the owner is doesn't have faith in the head coach. Why should I? He's created a whole different thing. So in that scenario, to me, this is one of those things where, yeah, he's going to have to take the brunt of, of public backlash on this one because that's the nature of it. But based on the two options of what he had, yeah. This is what the owner's going to do. And I'm not talking about Jerry. I'm talking about any owner. He's going to do this most of the time unless he's at a point where he's like, I think we need to make a move. Make, Otherwise, the owner's going to always say, I back my head coach. He's the right man for the job. He's, You know, the yeah. owner has to sell to the public. This is the guy that, that we need to have faith in. So he's going to do that every single time unless he's at a point where he's like, Got to go. But and at no that point, then he'll say, got to go. Even when, I'm sorry. What, what I just said, no, but no one is buying. I get it. I no, get, that's, and, nor, maybe they shouldn't. But the point is, I'm just saying, we all have to take a step back here and realize, like, what else was he going to say? Yeah, you're no. making a different kind of comment only creates problem. Right. And you need what to, else he and say? that's who you have right now, Jason Garrett. And you need to show him support. Obviously, I'm sure behind doors, <laughs> they're not just sitting there drinking coffee or whiskey and, and that's, relaxing. <laughs> not to bring, not to bring shop talk to the air, which, and I, I get Nick's point. I mean, when the owner says something like that, it, it's newsworthy. It's news. Yeah. It doesn't register with me as like this huge news because what else is he going to say? Like, I defy somebody find me an example where the owner, or whoever 
before making a move went on the radio or tv and was like yeah no um you know we're not really feeling good about phil jackson like probably we're gonna yeah we're gonna talk and maybe he won't be the coach on monday like that doesn't happen <laughs> right, yeah. everything's good until it's not good hey we'll see what happens after jackson right no question in. Right. Even Jerry Jones has a long and deserved reputation for for saying whatever he wants, basically. But like he he's not going to say that. Even he wouldn't say that. So it doesn't it doesn't register with me because he doesn't really have a choice in the like. That's what he has to say. Can you imagine, that? and that's what he'll keep saying until whatever happens, whether it's this week, five years from now, whatever. He'll keep saying that until he changes his mind, and he'll do before publicly he talks. Change, if right, he's ready to publicly. Right, right, right. Where right, do you right. stand on Jason Garrett right now? Um, Talk to me at six thirty Sunday. Sunday. Can after you after imagine? <laughs> just, oh my just, gosh. just wait like, till then. I, I know, know we would be going crazy on it. Like, <laughs> hey man, get a new graphic ready for our new head coach. If like, this quote, <laughs> what are we doing? If here? this, if this quote, <laughs> this public show of support is generating, you know, a frenzy on social media. Imagine. If he was like, we'll see what happens against the Jags, and then I'll decide. <laughs> like, whoa. So, um, it's, would you and agree? again, I don't want I don't want anybody out there to think that this is excuse making because it's not. We're just trying to give you guys the real on how this stuff comes Let's, about. Because I know there's a lot of people out there saying, like, why would he even say something? Why would he even think something like that? This is why he says something like that is because what else is he going to yeah. say? And this happens a lot, not just with Jerry. It happens with players, too. You'll hear him make these comments sometimes, and you're like, really? That player thinks that? No, not necessarily. But what else is he going to say? It's it's, a, it's kind of the, 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 the best that I can say in this moment right. to diffuse as much yeah. as I can. Right? And the thing about it is, is that the guys on the radio show don't ask the question, then they get ridiculed for it. Right. They but, have to ask the question. But they ask the question, and it's a dumb question because any anytime you get what they people perceive to be as a dumb answer, then you know it was probably a dumb question. But it was one of those that had to be done. So you have to ask it. it. Has to be answered this way, and then the reaction is this way. It's kind of a weird cycle from the media there. But I mean, it's really nobody's at fault. I don't fault the guys. For no, asking, I don't either. Asking the question, you know, and I don't really fault Jerry for answering that way. Now, no, and they you actually, can go. <laughs> there's levels of over the top. Well, <laughs> but Jerry, but Jerry is the eternal optimist. Yeah. So let's also be real about it. Like he's gonna go over the top when it yeah. comes to that, and he's gonna go like, "Hey, I believe in this guy. This guy's like he's a salesman. He's mm-hmm. selling his guy, and we'll see if that should change." I remember Nick. I'm pretty sure this happened at some point a couple <laughs> I'm weeks. Pretty before, sure yeah, this no, happened. No, but I'm, a couple weeks before Wade was fired. Did Jerry not give him an, an kind of an endorsement? Maybe not as strong as this, because I think this is really strong. But I'm pretty sure up until the point that he fired him, Jerry was still like, I think Jay, Wade's the right guy. I think Wade's fine. Um, I, I don't remember him being publicly like, I don't know. We gotta, we gotta get, mean, be, we gotta like do, you know. Green Bay. Yes, before Green Bay is what I'm saying. Oh. Before you got to Green Bay, before you got to Jacksonville, because that was the week before that, right? Uh, I think so. I think it was Jacksonville. I have to go back and see if I can pull up some old hey, archives. But, but, but I, I don't remember him being like. Okay, but Saturday night before the Green Bay game, yeah. I, we were at the bar in Appleton, Wisconsin. That's exactly what it was There's called. only one. It, well, no, no, there's no. There's actually a lot of no, bars no, no. in Appleton, Wisconsin. There's a Wisconsin. bunch. There's a bunch, but there's only one called The Bar. Okay, got it. And uh, we and Rob, Rob and I were there, and Wes Phillips was there, offensive assistant, we're tight ends coach maybe at the time. And son of. Yeah, yeah son of Wade. Son and, of bum son. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he said, man, he's, you know, if we don't win this game, dad's probably getting fired. And and Rob and I are kind of like, you know, you can you know how Rob is. He's like, uh, did I hear just hear that? Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's just the way it is. It's not awkward. I mean, it's just the way this is. If we don't win this game, we'll be one and seven and it's national TV and it's probably not going to go well. That's just the way it goes. And so I think the writing was on the wall there. They didn't expect to lose 45 to seven. Uh, which you know made it worse. So yeah, you know, and and that's what we've always talked about with when when you make the you, when you make those decisions is when you feel like you've lost the team. And I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think that's that's happening right now. This well, is a, to bring it full circle, that's this is the spe- like when things are going bad with the team, it's the biggest. It's the bi- it's the thing that aggravates me the most is like and and fans are well within their rights. It's like fans want what should happen. Like you know, and the, Jason Garrett should be fired. Like this is our record. Blah 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 blah. I tell you what is happening, mm-hmm. and like I, we, we're vilified for that, you know. And like, and and I'm not excuse making for Jason Garrett. That's a whole separate conversation. But like, on October, what's today? October twelfth. Yeah, twelfth. On October twelfth at twelve eleven. 
one game under 500, five, six weeks into the NFL season, it does not make sense to fire your head coach right now. Like it, it doesn't, nobody does that. Like, and, and you know, it's built up over years. I get it. People are frustrated, but like, just remove your, your passion and your intensity and your love for this team from the equation. And just think about it. Like the season is not lost. Even if you have no faith that it is going anywhere, <laughs> It's right. it's not lost. That's the, play it out. That yeah. is the reality of the situation. And then the conversation changes as that changes. If the losses keep piling up, it's time to have different conversations. But it's foolish that, you know, your your ideas and opinions about this team built up over the years is going to impact what you're doing right now. Uh, and I just, you know, people think I'm defending Jason Garrow when I say that. No, that's just the reality of the situation. Nobody does that. Right. George Steinbrenner wouldn't do that. The time for that is January. Yeah, well, if, or even, if, no, if, I mean, if you're sitting at, no, but I'm saying, no, if you're sitting at home in January when the playoffs are going on and you've had another bad season, that's the time I think that it, I don't actually think there's any good necessarily that comes out of making a change to the head coach in the middle of a season, I personally don't I won't even good I won't out. even go that far. I mean, the time t- the time could be was that game in October or November? What uh, the Green Bay? Yeah, game. Yeah, October. The time could be October. No, I, I I disagree, and I think maybe you disagree with it as well. Because think about it like this: mm-hmm. if you let Wade continue to happen like that, then who's the head coach? But the thing is, is that you got an opportunity to see what Jason Garrett was okay. able to do, and so may, there might be a coach on this staff, maybe somebody that coaches defensive backs, that you want to be. A a head coach and I'd like to see four or five games with but, him. But here's here's where I free. think here's where I think that could have backfired on you a little bit. Um if the Cowboys made their decision based upon what he did in the final part of that season and said he's our guy, that means they probably didn't do their due diligence of all the other guys that were out there to figure out whether he was better than all the other guys out there. That's where I have a problem with it. Well that's another tricky situation because Jason Garrett was the head coach in waiting before Wade Phillips I get was that. even named. No, so I get that, but I'm that just saying gonna happen. to me I think that I think that if you're gonna make a change to a head coach at a major program, I'm talking about college or pro, I think you need to take the time to not just look at what's in your building. But look outside and see who are those young guys out there or old guys. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to have ageism Speak on. Speak for on, yourself. Like, <laughs> <Let's> just, <laughs> just go out and find who you think are the best guys that given what you currently do and what you how you want to see your team formed has the best credentials to be able to take you where you want to go. And don't be limited to just the guy that you've kind of had pegged in your building that you think is going to be the next up and coming guy. Now I know that that probably is influenced a little bit by watching guys like Sean Payton walk out of the door and then end up winning a Super Bowl. I'm sure that kind of stuff kind of makes you say, well, I don't want to lose a guy that right. then goes somewhere else. But I still think you got to take the time and do the due diligence to know wow. that he is the best guy yeah. available. Here, here's a, a, another question. Wait, I see a lot ahead. of people – Way, I see a ahead. lot of people, you know, obviously wanting to fire the head coach, wanting to fire Scott Linehan, wanting to fire both of them. In reality, let's say a few weeks down the road and with the season kind of going how it's going right now, which one would be the first move to be made by Jerry Jones? Either the offensive coordinator coach or the head coach? Well, I mean... Based off what you just said, though, I don't know if you do anything. Because if you say how the season is going right now, because how the season's going right now is a win here and well, a lose here. No, you win all your home and you lose all your Okay, road. with the season heading downwards and where okay. you're like, okay, we need to make a, okay, a bigger okay. change. That's, you know, if it, if it starts to kind of get off the road, I mean, the, the, the wheels are wobbling right now. If, right. The, if it starts to, to get really bad <laughs> here, then, then yeah, I, I get you. Um I think if Jerry too- Jones is make if Jerry Jones is making a change, I would assume it's the tip top, right? I mean, yeah, but I think it's one of those things like, what are you going to change, Jason? I mean, I th- I think it's and that happens sometimes. I think it's yeah. honestly, I know we laughed about it, but I mean, I'm, if I was Jason Garrett, I'm not. So I'm not taking over the play calling until, like, it might be a bye week thing. <laughs> After the Jags? Play smart. <laughs> well, it also might be a bye week. So you have a lot Washington. of time to kind of get yourself yeah. ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I the, that's uh, In 15, they, you know, they, they benched Whedon and they put McFadden in front of Randall, and they did that during the bye week, so... I think you get two more games. The worst you could be is what, th- uh, two and two and five, five, yeah, yeah. two and five with an, a division loss to the. So Reds. you wouldn't Which, fire Scott Linehan. You just take over the play calling. I don't think you'll fire the a pl- coordinator in the season. You probably just 
take the plate. And you don't, you may not even announce it. Like I've seen that happen too, where they don't even announce it. They just kind of somebody else. (laughs) I'm announcing it from Jason. He could say it in the building. He doesn't necessarily have to announce it to the world. Uh, I need to announce it to the world to go, (laughs) to go back to my point. And you know, whatever people can say, I'm defending all they want. Like, I'm not saying the Cowboys are going to get it together and have this great season. It's not trending that way, but they're two and three. Like, and we've seen these trends of like, well, not not only that. I mean, again, and I think I think this is noteworthy. Only once in his tenure as head coach has Jason Garrett let a season completely get away to the point where they're not competitive at the end. And that was when he didn't have his quarterback. Like when he's had the guys he's supposed to have, they've been there until week 16, week 17. I said that on Twitter the other day and everybody lost their mind. Like, or well, we're supposed to accept mediocrity? No, that's not what I'm saying. Like, I think we would all agree that eight and eight and no playoffs is probably not good enough for Jason Garrett. I mean, we said that before the season, right? Yeah. That, to your point, that's a conversation for January. I think no. But you're playoffs. not. You're not. You're not going to do this drastic. You know, if you're trading wins and losses and you're still in the mix in a bad East, who pulls the plug on that mid-season? Maybe right. you reevaluate when it's over and say, we're going to go in a new direction. But you are not going to pull the plug on a season that has a chance to get to the playoffs, which right now, yeah. that is still completely playoffs. possible. I know. I know. But I'm just saying, <laughs> again, it's not about what it should be. It's about what it is. Right. That's yeah. what's important. Realism, baby. Realism. Let's take our final break. And when we come back, we'll get into game day predictions. The Cowboys are playing against the Jags this weekend. So let's discuss that. While a player can look good on paper, it's when he's out on the field that you really find out what he's made of. That's why the Cowboys rely on more than stats and scouting reports when building their team. When picking a tractor, it's why you should rely on more than specs and features as well. you got to take it out and put it to the test. The Cowboys did when they named John Deere their official tractor. To experience one for yourself, visit your local Texas John Deere dealer or go to myjohndeerdealer.com slash football. It's time for tailgate with the Otterbox boys. Otterbox? The makers of those crazy protective phone cases? The one and only. They're also wild about protecting parking lot parties from sad drinks. It's why they made Elevation Tumblers. Rumor around the crock pot is they're made from stainless steel with a copper lining to keep temps hot or cold. True. They even come in seven different sizes, up to 64 ounce the growler. Hmm. I like how Otterbox drinks. I mean, thanks. And that's been tailgating with the Otterbox boys. Check out all the colors and sizes of their Elevation Tumblers at otterbox.com. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Playmaker, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The Playmaker includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm and a Cowboys can cooler. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word COWBOYS. The Jack Black Playmaker, 10 bucks, free shipping. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with sideline access and photo ops with current players, alumni, and cheerleaders. That's not all, though. You'll get to talk X's and O's with Senior Director of Player Personnel Will McClay and, of course, with yours truly, me, Brian Broaddus. You can trust the official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and with us, you'll travel like a pro. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. A man's Stetson doesn't just protect him from life's elements. It projects an unstoppable and legendary spirit, just like the men wearing silver and navy on the field every Sunday. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. They are still the official crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find Stetson hats in the pro shop or at Stetson.com today. Back to the break. Oh, we talked to Tommy John. We definitely are. Tommyjohn.com's got the best underwear in the world. If they don't think it, if you don't think that's true, just try a pair, send it back. Wash it first, but send it back, and they'll give you the, your money back. But you won't because you'll love it, and it's great. Tommyjohn.com forward slash cowboys. Get it. Thank you, Nick. Let's hit the inactive list and. Mike White We're, actually has mine. That's the first Everyone guy. else go. We, I got mine. <laughs> every, every. Sean Lee. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Sean Lee out. Yes. He actually did not practice. Every Friday we, we go to practice and we take role and me and some of the other beat writers play the inactive game. It's mm-hmm. always fun. What do you got? Mike White, Dalton Schultz, mm-hmm. Xavier Suafilo, Joe Thomas, Sean Lee, 
newly added cornerback C.J. Goodwin, and then they got a choice to make at defensive tackle. Uh, I assume, and again, I got to see it, but I assume David Irving is going to be up for this game. Which means? Which Karan. means either Karan Reed or Daniel Ross is probably sitting. That's easy to me. It has to be Karan Reed, right? Yeah, Ross had Ross five had a great game last week yeah. relative to he his our, role. He made our top ten list. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he, right. He's got to play. Reed. I didn't say. I now, just. I think. No, I know. Choice. I'm just. I'm just Linebacker. saying. Like I think. Well, Tom, Joe Thomas is certainly sitting. He's wearing a boot, and I would assume Sean Lee sits too. Is this Lucchese? Huh? A oh, Lucchese boot? no, not a cowboy boot. Like oh. an orthopedic <laughs> boot. Like yeah. a. The Mark injury Lillard. Boot. Chris Covington. You got, you got uh, Leighton Van Der Esch will be your starting Will, Jalen Smith, Mike. Damian Wilson will be your starting Sam and will back up Mike. Uh, Justin March Lillard would be your backup we, uh, Will. And I think Covington would be your backup Sam. Slash five, special teams. five backers. That's five backers. A lot of talent, though. A lot of talent, but I'm just saying. That's yeah, not- oh, it's, it's not ideal. They're put. We we raved about this depth at linebacker for six months. Well, it's being it's going to be put to the test. So who did? <laughs> sorry, defensive back. Who'd you put out there? Uh, I put. Like I'm Goodwin? I'm guessing Goodwin is down because all your corner. If Cheeto can go, which I assume he can, all your corners will be healthy. And uh, new guy Darian Thompson probably needs to play special yeah. teams. Ibrahim Campbell got cut. So this this question I didn't think to ask you earlier this week when you gave us a scouting report on Jacksonville's offense, but. Um, do they tend to be in base? Like, do they tend to be in a in a formation? Do they run three wide as their base, or is this a team that because they like to run the ball so much, the Cowboys could find themselves in base defense, which now affects your linebackers a lot more as far as the numbers uh, than you would typically see from an NFL team? They do eleven a lot because they like to have those receivers out there. But this this is a team that likes to like they look a lot more old school than what we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Like they like to line up in twelve and thirteen and run the ball. Yeah. So yeah, I would guess you're going to see. So your third, you're going to probably have three linebackers out there a fair amount of time. Damian more than Wilson's maybe usual, usual. probably going to have some snaps. Yeah, I think that's fair. And that that becomes now it becomes really interesting because you're right now depth is an issue to some degree because you got those three guys out there more frequently versus two. Knock on wood. Which well, if they can get through this based on his workload this week, I feel optimistic Sean Lee will be available for the trip to Washington. We'll see. But I don't think he'll be there on Sunday. All right. Well, we'll see. Nick has been begging to have a longer segment on about game day predictions. Wow. So apparently he has some really good predictions, right. I guess. Let's so, Nick, couple, what, what do you got for us? I mean, hey, can I throw in one other inactive thing to, to talk yeah. about real quick? Just We didn't talk about this it's on the happen. opposite side. It's going to happen again. Jalen Ramsey is listed as questionable for this game. So, okay. just That would be know. big. Yeah. That w- I, there, I don't yeah. think there's much of any way that he does not play in this yeah. game. Right. Although he is listed as questionable. Something to keep an eye on. Cool. Let's attack that's you, him. That's to keep you wondering <laughs> about him. it. You know? Just go right at him. Test him early. Sure. Go for it. Test him with Deontay Thompson. <laughs> mm. I think this game is going to be about special teams. I think whoever has a whoever has a big play or bad play on special teams, um, that's going to affect this game. I think the offenses are similar. I think the defenses are similar. I do think Jacksonville's way better, but I just think that you know it, it's going to come down to that. Uh, it'll be a kicking game play. It might be a block punt. It might be a you know, a play that's downed inside the one yard line, something like that. That special teams is going to probably be a difference maker in this one. That's my prediction part. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I, What's the score? Oh, we doing that? Uh, I, I think know. Dallas will win the game. I do. I think there they're going to win twenty to sixteen. I think uh, it's Jeez. not going to. That's it's, an explosion, oh, God. <laughs> Seriously, it's the NFL. I mean, I mean, I know that they they play that way, but it'll it. Whenever you think it's going to be something, it's typically not. That's a good and, point. And I think you know they'll it'll it'll be it'll be down to the end. And I think Blake Bortles is not very good. I don't think that offense is very good. And um, I think the Cowboys' defense is going to have to make some plays, but they got to be like Houston. They got to make some turnovers. You know, to do it, I think they will. I think it'll be a fun game, and I think they're going to win it. I just, I think, you know, like I've said all along, I'll stick with it. You really, it's hard to get to eight and eight if you're not three and three. So I think they need to get to three and three. Let's do it. 
2016 W. It would be the least surprising thing in the world if the Cowboys found a way to win this game. The least surprising thing in the world is going to be that guy butchering the defensive tackle's name in yes. the press box. Yes, yes. Uh, the guy but, that does the PA in the press box will not be able to say Yannick one, Ngagwe. One of these I days, can't. one of these days, can one of you guys just record like what our yes. experience is there? And yes. Just bring some of that to the air. I'll do what's think, funny is the guy. I think next it's to good me, stuff for the for guy fans next to me. What's his name? Who the the guy that the defensive tackle for the Jaguars? Yannick Ngagwe. He's an end, but end. Yeah. Sorry, Yannick Ngad Ngagwe. Yeah. Okay. So, you got that down just like that in a so couple seconds. Yeah. What's gonna happen is is like tackle made by yeah Yannick Ngagwe, and then the guy next to me, Todd Archer, is gonna just he just be typing his notes. He's like, no, no way. Doesn't even know how to say it. It's like no way. They give you a phonetic pronunciation guide on the roster. Yeah. Yeah. He's just he won't get Blake Bortles right. No, he won't. Um, it it won't be surprising to me if the Cowboys find a way to win. They've been better at home. Blake Bortles wants to give you the ball, and that's if they're going to win. I think they're going to not just get takeaway. They need to score points on defense. Like they're all, Jacksonville's given up seventeen per game. The Cowboys are scoring sixteen per game. If 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 conventional wisdom says you need like 24, 27 points to win an NFL game. You got to find them somewhere. It's not not just a scoop. It's the scoop. No, you need the score <laughs> scoop too. Yeah, score. I need Jalen Swift to, <laughs> Smith to scoop. swipe and score. Um, I I got to see it though. I, I mean, they've been better at home, but this is a different beast than what they've seen. I mean, Jacksonville's 191 passing yards per game mm-hmm. against an offense that is averaging 176. Like, that's not good. And uh, I just I need to see it to believe that it's going to happen. I think. I think 2016 too, but I think Jacksonville finds I I trust them to move the ball against Dallas's offense way more than I trust the Dallas offense to to be able to come up with enough points. I agree with you. Here's where I differ. I actually think Jacksonville's offense will outscore Dallas's offense. However, I think Dallas's defense does get that pick six or that fumble that's returned for a touchdown. I think the Cowboys are able to win because of the because the only touchdown in the game will be scored by the Cowboys defense. That would get the them the only 10 touchdown. In I the think game. I think it will be a 10-6 game. Wow! I think the only touchdown <laughs> scored in this game will be by the defense, not the offense. We're going I think both these offenses are going to have a hard time moving the ball against those 2015 Tampa Bay style. There you go. 10-6 will be the oh, final man. score. My Cowboys fa- one of my 10-6. I'm not I'm not being sarcastic. One of my absolute favorite games that I've covered here, just because it was such a S show like it was just <laughs> it was. a nightmare. Was. Which show, which game are you talking about? Ten six in Tampa, twenty fifteen. Oh, like yeah. the last game before Romo came back. Yeah, nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> the first word. Right. When, yeah, we've had better first words than that. <laughs> yeah, Bri- Brian and I are hot. We're down there. We're like they just lost to that team. It was bad all the way that around. Team. Like, what you, the post game was bad. The morning was bad. Beach. What do you got, Amber? <laughs> oh no, no, I'm out. No. What do you mean no. you're out? You know what? I start off the week really upset, and I'm like, you know, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not picking them to win again. And then as the week gets by, like you're we like get to Thursday, Michael Friday, Michael Corleone, like they pull me back <laughs> in. Yeah, they pull me back in. I'm like, you know what? Okay, something, something about it. Okay, has to happen. So I just have very, very mixed feelings for this weekend. I think um, it's going to be obviously a very tough battle, especially uh, between the two defenses. But I think maybe Jacksonville, yeah. they they pull it through, and I don't know. This sucks, man. You sound, this just sucks. Sound it sucks broken. because my heart wants to go with the Cowboys sure. right now, and then my logic wants to go with hey, the Jags. Trust me, Dave knows it's a lot easier to be in that locker room if they win. He yep. he would like for them to win for uh, that reason too, but yep. you know, I just <laughs> I, I'm, know. Gonna, I'm going one more time. <laughs> I'm just gonna go one more. I, I just kind of one more time. I, I, well, I mean, not one more time for the season, but I just feel <laughs> like I'm just kind kind of convinced that this team is just right there at the end. It's close. I think they're going to win it, but um, I hope you're right. I'm sorry, Nick. No, I'm just saying I've been I've gone back and forth all week, too. I hope Derek's right that they get a defensive touchdown because it's just not something we've seen enough. It seems like everybody else gets a more like Byron Jones had a pick six in Washington last year. And before that, it was probably Rolando McClain. But this is the kind of team you can get it from. Like, yeah, no, I don't think they're going to necessarily do that against some of the other teams. I got to see it, though. I I don't think Dallas will lose a close game. I think they'll they could win a close game. I think they win a close game, or they get their ass. You know what's game. really gonna piss? <laughs> you know what's really gonna I upset do. me is you're you're gonna see the our defense 
get an interception, get a takeaway, a turnover, and then they give the ball back to Dallas and uh, the offense, and the offense doesn't do anything with it, and we just see... And if Amber, t- that's Amber the point. Like, it's so gonna have to, I think the defense like, is going to have to score for them this week. I it was ten really six Houston when the, the Brown fumble and, and picked up by Lewis, and they got to like the fifteen. And I looked over and I was like, "Cool, 10-9. Awesome. But they they actually did score a touchdown yeah, did off score of that, touchdown. so they got to do more of that. They need takeaways. They all right, do. guys, this is all the time we have for today. We'll check us out on Sunday and see how this game turns out for the Cowboys. For Derek Eagleton, Nick Eman, David Hellman, I'm Ambar Garcia. See you guys next time on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about that?